I'm going to show you how to build a cartridge aspirator. First, let's talk about what an aspirator is. Standard aspirators are used to suck up small, uh, small specimens, such as uh, I'm an entomologist, so we suck up ants and aphids and white flies and leaf miners and things like that, small insects. So um, standard aspirator that you'll see um, in most catalogs will look something like this. You'll have a container that the specimen's held in, a, uh, a tip of some type that you suck up the specimens with, and on the other end, in this device, you use your mouth and suck, and it causes a vacuum in the container, and your specimen will get sucked up through the tip and into the container. There's a screen on one of the tips to make sure that you don't suck up whatever you're trying to get into your container. Then you pop the container off and put on a lid and put a new container on, and you're set to go, and you have, it, have your specimen contained here. The problem with these aspirators is that when you remove this container, if you're working with specimens that are uh, highly mobile, you can have, they can easily escape unless you're very quick at it, and sometimes that doesn't happen. Also, these containers can be fairly large sometimes compared to what you're aspirating, and you have to carry around a lot of these, which can be inconvenient also. So, today I'm going to show you how to make the, uh, a different type of aspirator that we call a cartridge aspirator. Uh, it's very similar to what's also known as a pooter. So it consists of a, the same got suction hose, Tigon hosing, widely available, uh, several other lab supplies that we'll talk about shortly. Um, the benefit to this is when you're sucking in your specimens, when you're done you can continue sucking, remove the tip, close the lid, pull out the cartridge, and then you have your specimen in your cartridge ready to go. There's a screen on the bottom there, so you have a much smaller container. You can store that and go and put the next one in. Uh, other benefit is this is all made out of very cheap supplies that you can get at any laboratory supply store. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to make that right now. What you will need for this project is scissors, a hot glue gun, razor blade, some type of fine mesh that your specimen won't be able to come through, small pipette tip around one mil, large pipette tip five mil, Tigon tubing, and two mil centrifuge tubes. The first thing you're going to make is the aspirator body or the cartridge receiver. So I have a pre-made cartridge here which is just a two mil centrifuge tube like we talked about and our five mil pipette tip. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to snip the tip off of the pipette tip so we get higher airflow. We don't want to go too far up because we need to uh, still put this into the uh, Tigon tubing. So then we're going to take this and we're going to insert it into the Tigon tubing firmly. So there we go. And then the second step is we're going to take, we need the cartridge to fit snugly in here so that there's no airflow around it. So we're going to take our scissors here. We're going to cut this pipette tip so that the centrifuge tube fits securely in the pipette tip. Sticks out a little bit so it's easy to pull out, but once it's in there, it, it forms a tight, a tight fit. One way you can check this is stick a cartridge in there, suck on the tube, and if you can't suck while the lid's closed, you're golden. Your second step is going to be to build the cartridge, which is very simple. It's just the, the two mil centrifuge tube and some screening, and we're going to melt out the bottom of the tube and glue it to the screening. So we take our hot glue gun, preheated, and we're going to melt the bottom of the centrifuge tube with the glue gun. Give it a second. These tubes are very... take a, take a decent amount of heat. Um, if you're doing a lot of these and you're in a well-ventilated area, a soldering iron also works well, very well for melting out the bottoms of these tubes if you're going to do a lot. But they tend to uh, burn the plastic instead of just melting it like the hot glue gun. So you have to be in a well-ventilated area. So the bottom is now melted out of the tube. Well, it's not melted. Okay, bottom's melted out. So then we're going to take we make sure that there's no melted plastic inside the tube. Then we're going to take our hot glue gun. We're going to lay a nice bead around the edge of the tube that we just melted off. 
be very careful not to put too much glue. If you put too much, you can end up uh, restricting the airflow. So there we go. That's hot glue strings everywhere. So then we're going to take that. You can't see it down here, but I'm going to push it onto my screening on my tabletop. Give it a slight spin. So now my my centrifuge tube is glued to my screening. Okay. So we're going to let that cool. We're going to do several of these at a time. And then we're going to go back through once they're all dry and cut them out. To cut them out, we're going to use our scissors. We're going to just cut around it real nicely. Okay, so you can see I, I cut around it as close as I could with the scissors, and then we're going to take our razor blade and shave around that and make it nice and clean. Here's one I've already done with the razor blade. Make it nice and clean so that we have a nice clean circle that will fit nicely inside of our aspirator. The final step is to make your aspirator tip. So for that, you're going to need centrifuge tube, one that you haven't melted the hole through yet, just a, a brand new one, your small, there we go, your small pipette tip, a pair of scissors, and your hot glue gun. Okay, so we're going to start with our, our centrifuge tube. We're going to snip the top, the lid, off of the pipette, off of the, excuse me, off of the centrifuge tube. You can discard this, that's trash. So you're going to take this, this, this lid, your hot glue gun, be careful with this part because we're going to melt with our hot glue gun. So you're going to melt out the center ring. Can you see there? The, the center rings of the lid. We're going to melt those out with the hot glue gun that's been sitting over here heating up. You're going to melt that out. Uh, be very careful. Obviously, the hot glue gun's hot, so don't burn your fingers. Okay. So you can see there now, there's a hole in the lid. Now we're going to take our pipette tip and we're going to check and make sure we didn't melt the hole too big. Oh, that's just perfect. So uh, you insert the pipette. We're going to insert the pipette tip through the no oh, wrong way through the hole, and we want it to fit snugly, snugly in there and not pass all the way through. Okay, so that's that that's that's perfect. So then we're going to take our hot glue gun. We're going to put a bead of glue around the tip, hopefully. And be careful here, you don't want to melt the tip or put too much glue on like I just did. But that's okay, we can fix that. And then you're going to pull the tip down. Oh, you can't see that. We'll pull it down into the, into the hole. Make sure we're square, and then we're going to let the tip dry, or cool, rather. So once the glue is, is set, we're going to use our razor blade, and we're going to shave off any extra glue. As you can see there, I put on way too much glue because I have a large glue gun. If you have a smaller one, it's much better. A bunch of extra glue there, so we need to shave off that extra glue. I'm just going to pick off what I can with my fingers now that it's cool enough to touch and not burn my fingers. Okay. There you go. You can also use a uh, probe or something like that to push the glue down to make sure you have a smooth edge in there. So that's it. So your pipette, so your aspirator tip is complete. Um, I'd highly recommend making many of these. Uh, we're going to cut the, la well, the, the very last step, which I usually do in the field, not when I make them, is you're going to cut the tip Obviously, your insects are probably not going to be that small unless you're sucking up mites or something like that. So I work with leaf miners, which are about, about that big. So you cut the tip off, and now you have an orifice the same size as your little bigger than your specimen, and then you're ready to go aspirate. So now we've made all three pieces. We have our, our suction hose, our cartridge with our screen on the bottom. Open that up. And we have our t 
tip, which has been cut to size of whatever we want to aspirate, we put that on there and we're ready to go collect our specimens for the day. Thank you for watching. My name is Danny Klitich. I'm a graduate student at the University of California, Davis, in the entomology department in the Perella lab. I hope you enjoy your aspirator, and uh, please follow the link below to find a PDF of how to build this, including instructions and diagrams, and please share widely and enjoy my other videos. Have a great day.